What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2021 Series 10 video. It is late, however, I just had to record this video because one, I fixed my PC, so we're back on YouTube, and two, the first completion of the VGC Iron Man has been done by Introduce Yourself. Hey guys, I'm Ryan, or also known as Sableye VGC. And how hard was this? I mean, surprisingly, I think I got fairly lucky, so it actually worked on my eighth attempt, which is pretty good, but I've... It, it was annoying. It was tough. Yeah, I dude, I, I tried it two or three times, and I think half the battle is just like having a viable team for each restricted Pokemon. And yep. at that, I think also just not dropping a single game is really stressful. But you did it on stream. I'll go ahead and I'll like show a clip of that happening when you like finally completed it right now. Um, but yeah, what we have here today is one of or i guess not one of it's every team that he used in the vgc iron man with a couple of teams having their information hidden for reasons um and we're just going to talk through it i'm going to talk to uh ryan here about routing and the pokemon he used and the sets he used and why he ended up doing that so if you guys enjoy this do me a favor leave a like in the video subscribe to the channel turn notifications and uh answer my comment question of the day which of these pokemon do you think would be the hardest in your iron man run if you decide to try it and of course subscribe to ryan save live vgc his link will be in the description and yeah, let's. Uh, I guess we'll start off with uh, with Rayquaza or Rayquaza. I know it's it's technically, I mean it's Quasar, so it's Rayquaza, but people will argue regardless. Why don't you go ahead and tell me about this sick Iron Tail spread? Choice Bandit. Okay, I just saw that. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. My first like I think ten or eleven teams were all stolen from Turtle Mania VGC. So shout out to the Turtle. Shout <laughs> out Turtle Mania. Honest. But uh, honestly though, Rayquaza, by far, hardest Pokemon to use. Super inconsistent, doesn't get any sort of favorable matchup. Okay, maybe you could say Groudon or Kyogre so you can turn off weather, but you just die. Yeah, and Kyogre's a toss up because they got like Ice Beam on that, so it's not even like a favorable matchup. Yeah, you just die. So the concept here, I guess, is just choice band, maybe kill something, kill a threat before you die and then just use instant Serena, Aleki, and just pivot around after that. Yeah, it just seems to be like Choice Band Rayquaza, stack attack it to make sure you don't auto lose to Xerneas, and Milotic to avoid Intimidate on lead. Yep. It seems pretty That's, standard, but I, I guess not standard because it's Rayquaza, but you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, uh, so you would argue that Rayquaza is probably the most difficult one to get a win with? 100%. All right. I don't. I don't even think it's room. There's room to argue. And then Zern would be the most difficult after that. Uh, not Zern. No. Mewtwo would be the most difficult after that. Yeah, but you ended up going uh, Zamazenta Crown instead. Yeah, just because it was Zami's really good at support. Like Ooh, I just phenomenal. saw the howl. Phenomenal. Like you put you put that beside Urshifu and you're getting kills every time. Even beside Rillaboom for the Grassy Glides, it's really really nice. Yeah, I'm a big so fan of Gen 8 Howl. Yeah, it, it, you're right. It, it's two slots now in Gen 8, right? It never used to be? Yeah, no, it was uh, Gen 7 and previous, you would only boost your own attack, so it was like, worse Swords Dance, and at that, worse workup. Yeah, for sure. It's, it, I put it second, just because it was one of those things, like, if I beat, if I got the win with Rayquaza, I wanted something a little bit less stressful to use. So, at least this way I can get Zamian, get some decent, a decent Pokemon. It's, don't get me wrong, it's bad, but, when you get the support like this, and if you get the right matchup for it, it can actually put in work. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, so it was basically just like Howl Zamazenta to boost the attack stat of like the two physical attackers next to it that actually appreciate it, and then just like standard speed control Landorus and Cinera stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> nothing, yeah. Uh, nothing too crazy there. I'm a bit of a fan of uh, Boneless Zamazenta at the moment. I, I really don't like the crown form. I think it's a lot better with like a choice band. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Ooh, okay, now this one's interesting. This this kind of catches my eye here, because you ended up scarfing your Mewtwo when, like, traditionally when we see someone try to use Mewtwo despite it being really bad, um, you tend to see, like, a like a Scarf Lele next to it just to help out with, like, Calyrex. Uh, mm -hmm. But it looks like you went with some kind of hybrid Sun Psychic Spam team. Okay, so I'm going to be honest, this is not my team. Mm -hmm. uh, I got this from Turtle, and I believe, don't quote me on it, but I believe it's Chase's team or Type Key's team or... I don't know how to say his username, but I believe that's it. It's basically a, an exact pace to bat. I changed Psy Shock to Psy Strike because Psy Strike's better. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, Mewtwo's here to tease a win. 
it's not a good mod at all, as you mentioned. I'm here to tease a win. If I can get Shiftry's there for the Sun for the Calyrex, um, Mewtwo's there for Calyrex, and hope you pull Calyrex or hope you pull something that you can just kind of like tease a win out of. Yeah, this this whole team, I'm just like having whiplash because I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Wait a second, and like I'm looking at this Torkoal, I'm like, yeah, flamethrower, that's kind of interesting. Is that Rock Tomb? And then I, and then I look at the Shift Tree, and I'm like, oh yeah, Snarl, Fake Out, Grass Nut, and Icy Wind. Like it's, I, I, I'm having whiplash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's tease a win and best of one. That's all that was because I think that's all you can do with Mewtwo. Yeah. All right. So next up, uh, Power Herb, Kirim Black. You're, oh my God, Free Shock. <laughs> Okay, so explain yourself here. <laughs> Once again, Turtles team, but I really liked it. I saw no reason to change it. It's one of the things where Kirum Black, you're either going to pull Kyogre or you're going to pull something where there's grass type support. So you're either going to get Rillaboom, Amoongus, and just being able to take those things out with like a big freeze shock whenever you want is super helpful for the rest of the team. Yeah, and so it doesn't even look like it has too many bad matchups. <laughs> You take the grass type down, your Urshifu is pretty well free, right? So yeah. that's kind of the concept there, right? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's funny, actually, because like when you look at Restricteds, it's typically you run a Pokemon to help the Restricted by removing the threat, and Kirin <laughs> Black is just the exact opposite. You're just treating Urshifu as the Restricted there. Yeah, oh, 100%. Well, with a lot of these teams, like these quote-unquote terrible Restricteds are, are there as the support mod, right? Like mm -hmm. you're not there to set them up to win. You're normally just there to take a tease a kill somewhere and set up the rest of your team yeah and it looked like you took the smart route with every pokemon that is like a bad restricted it seems like you threw a stack attack on there since it's pretty much its own restricted <laughs> it, it might as well be and then you got the instant urshifu rillaboom core that, you, that shows up a lot yeah <laughs> all right so uh we got weakness policy lugia and it just looks like pretty standard like soft trick room almost actually it's kind of interesting you got two grass types here with a Gastrodon East too. Yeah, was, I mean, I kind of see the concept there. I, I, yeah. It's pretty, it, this one feels like, oddly enough, the Lugia team feels the most straightforward of everything we've seen so far. Yeah, you know what? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's weakness policy, Lugia, low, low on ladder, you're going to get a lot of people that just proc that policy and you just go to town. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Uh, next up, this one is actually where my run ended. I believe my run ended on Zekrom. Mine did multiple times as well. It is, it is, I think, arguably not the worst restricted, but the most inconsistent. Like, I feel like it has so many bad matchups. I don't know if inconsistent, but it's it's up there with inconsistency for sure. It's yeah. not the not the best consistency. Did, on your run, did you end up uh, just pulling a Kyogre, or did you end up with something a bit more difficult? I'm going to be honest, I don't remember. All right. <laughs> I really I, don't remember. I haven't even had a chance to go back and watch or edit the VOD yet, so... <laughs> yeah, this one also seems pretty straightforward. But, uh, ooh, okay, Rain Dance on Tornadus. Is that just to help out with, like, the Sun matchup, since it doesn't look like anything... Or actually, no. Never mind, I see it. Right here. Rain Dance, Choice Scarf, first if we Okay, no, I get it now. <laughs> it actually... It actually Oko's Kali, so what you can Ooh. do is you can leave your Choice Scarf version of because normally you wouldn't kill, so you just Rain Dance. But they expect Tailwind, you Rain Dance, you just kill him, and you're good to go. That's kind of heat. All right, I see, I see a bit of a hot take here. It looks like you routed for Dialga before Giratina. I guess we'll get into Giratina in a minute, but uh, your thought process with this... Oh my god, Iron Defense Body Press. Uh, once again, not my thought process, but I saw it, and I'm like, you know what? It makes a lot of sense, because... There's a lot of things right now, like Urshifu, like the only thing they're critting you with is the water move and it's going to do nothing to you. Yeah. Once you get an iron defense up, you're basically just living there. You can sit there and you can live the special threats in this format, other than Xerneas, really don't hit you too hard. Like Kyogre doesn't touch you, Regilecki doesn't scare you, and then all the physical threats, you just wall out with iron defense and you're good to go. Yeah, this sort of reminds me of how like a lot of Eternatus teams play with like the Cosmic Power set, because you have a lot of the similar partners, like Urshfru, Rillaboom, yeah. Regilecki is really good on Eternatus, and then you just throw on something bulky that like, once you deal with whatever is like the major threat to, uh, I guess, Dialga here, which, what would be the biggest threat to this thing? Probably just like Groudon in the format? Uh, Groudon or Xerneas, if you want to go more common, probably yeah. Xerneas. So I feel like you have the tools of dealing with those things. Uh, Volcarona, to an extent, is a way of dealing with it, but like Dialga on its own can deal with it pretty okay with Flash Cannon. That, mm -hmm. I like this. This one, 
This is actually one of the cooler Dialga teams I've ever seen. I'm so used to just like seeing like the Dynamax Dialga teams that's just like self prop weakness policy. Yeah, I know. It's a crazy how different the format is without Dynamax. Yeah. So this one is the one that I actually talked to you about right before we started the video. I'm really interested on um, why you opted to go with uh, the more defensive uh, Giratina. Okay, I'm gonna be honest here once again, gonna sound like a broken record by the end of this video, I'm sure, but once again, not my team said, you know what, it's Giratina, I trust Turtle on this, and I just said, I'm not even gonna look at it, and here we are. <laughs> All right, I see I crit goes too. I did not look at the team until this, I started my run, so eight runs later, here we are, but I have no clue what it does. I feel like Turtle, like, Turtle is playing it a little, a little like fast and loose here with the stack attack. Uh, Life Orb strong and all, but this team having no safety goggles is really scary to me just on paper. Yeah, you know what? Very scary to be perfectly honest. But once again, you're running Garatina. There's just so many bad matchups that you need something that's gonna at least put on some pressure, right? Like yeah. with Life Orb, at least stack attacker, like you said before, it kind of becomes that restricted. So you want to do pressure, put put on it, uh, pressure with it, right? Yeah, it makes sense. If I see bulldoze on this, um, I haven't looked at it yet, but if I see bulldoze on this Suicune, do I get money? I'll give you money if there's bulldoze on that Suicune. Dang it. It gets bulldoze, right? <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> I want to double check that I wasn't just like throwing money out, out the window, but yeah. Okay. So life orb, so Galio, um, I'm assuming this is turtles team. This is once again, turtles team. Yes. Okay. Dang, we should have gotten Turtle on here with you. <laughs> <laughs> we probably should have. Honestly, we probably should have. Yeah, but um, so Life Orb, so Galio. I, I, how hard was it to get a win with Solgaleo? I feel like Solgaleo is probably one of the easier ones since there are so many. Um, I mean, it's got like a neutral matchup versus Kyogre, and it's got a positive matchup versus Xerneas. I feel like this is probably one of the one of the more uh, easy ones. Uh, it's very easy when you pull Cali Ice. <laughs> oh, you pulled Cali Ice versus. This. I, not only did I pull Cali Ice. <laughs> Believe it or not, Life Orb, Sun Steel Strike from 180 Adamant Soul Galio did not one shot the Cali Ice. I believe it. Cali Ice is stupid bulky. It did not one shot. And I almost lost the game. I'm like, why did it not die? <laughs> <laughs> no, I believe it. I believe it. Now, that is ridiculous, though. I'm looking at something a little bit familiar. I'm, I'm looking at something a little bit familiar. However, you seem to have disrespected it. Hey, what, is me, what is this? What is this? Blame Turtle. Hey, Turtle had a Tapu Bulu on this team, okay? Yeah, no, I did too. I made the team. Oh. <laughs> this is my team, dude. <laughs> I didn't even realize it was Tapu Bulu is the superior partner for this thing. And don't get me wrong, I love Tapu Bulu, but I'm like, I don't know, I had to go Rilla Boom here because it's just so good in the <laughs> I feel so disrespected, but like secondhand, <laughs> since you thought it was Turtles team. Uh, I, I, honestly, I'm not even sure if all of them are Turtles team, but I just didn't realize it was yours. Yeah, no, I mean, I know how this one works. So, uh, first of all, it works better with the Bulu. I'll explain this one to the viewers real quick. <clears throat> yes, please. Explain <clears throat> it to me, because to... I didn't understand the Bulu. All right, so I'm about to spit some Bulu propaganda as usual. Um, so... By running Tapu Bulu on an Necrozma Dust main team along with Incineroar, you improve your Calyrex Shadow matchup by not only adding a more special defensive Pokemon, but by adding a secondary Snarl Pokemon that always underspeeds Ndidi, therefore making it so you can always get Fake Out on lead versus Ndidi uh, Calyrex Shadow teams. And also, it just absolutely annihilates Tornogre because you live both hits, and it doesn't matter if they protect in Tailwind, like you just get it. So yeah. That, that's it. It's just it's just slow. <laughs> it's just it's slow, and it always you always get terrain up. No, oh, but honestly, that's smart though, right? Like I didn't even consider that. I, I looked at it. and I'm like, you know, Tapu Bulu, Tapu Bulu, I love you, buddy, but you gotta go. Oh, and uh, a honestly, recent a, a recent edit I made to the team after I actually made the video. I forget what move I dropped. I think I dropped a wood hammer on Tapu Bulu. Um, I replaced it for Nature's Madness because you actually underspeed in the Dust main by one point. So you can Nature's Madness into Sunsteel Strike. Nice. Yeah, uh, but how was well, your experience with this overall? Now that I'm done I, uh, yelling about Tapu Bulu. <laughs> I mean, I think I only had to use it twice. I think I I lost my run to it once. I used it another time I won, and I used it in the final run, and I, I ended up winning. I mean, I think I played a Kyogre, and my guy didn't even bring Kyogres. So, I mean... <laughs> yeah. 
All right, yeah. Uh, no, but honestly, like, this is probably one of my favorite teams because I discovered Necrozma Dusk Main plus Galarian Zapdos is just an auto win versus most Xerneas teams because regardless of what they lead off with to try to beat the... Yeah. <laughs> to try oh, to beat exactly. this thing, it's bad. Exactly. Everybody loves to intimidate cycle that, that, that Necrozma, right? So you, yeah. you get the Swords Dance, you get the Zapdos beside it. It's honestly a really well thought out team, I think. Thank you. I appreciate that. But uh, Zygarde... I, I'm a big fan of Zygarde Finny, but it feels weird not seeing the Misty Seed on this. So you got Leftovers. It's a very bulky spread. Obviously, it's going to want to go for Coil. Um, but beyond that, um, I'm curious why why Rock Slide. Like, did Rock Slide ever become, like, really useful? I don't think I clicked it once, but Rock Slide, where there's a Rock Slide, there's a way, you know? I think that's kind of why it's there. That makes <laughs> sense, because I feel like Thousand Arrows is just, like, better Rock Slide. I know it's a ground move, but it hits, like, the same things. Um, yeah, and if it doesn't hit the same things on the first turn, it will on the second. Yeah, it's one of the things where you know, you, you, if you need the if you need the flinch or something, it's never a bad idea to have. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I, half the time I'm clicking thousand arrows. Dude, right? I almost feel like on this team, since you're running coil anyways, like you know, might as well. Yeah, I could see it. Honestly, mm -hmm. I could see it. I didn't like I said. I don't think I put too much thought into any of these teams. I took most of them. I'm like, hey turtle, what are the first twelve teams you use? Because I'm struggling right now. Yeah. And then this is basically what we came up with. All right, it looks like we're about to hit the cutoff point. I would say the cutoff point of bad Pokemon or even mid Pokemon ends at after Ho-Oh. I think after yeah, Ho-Oh is when we I get agree. into like good Pokemon, and I, it feels weird seeing Reshiram above Ho-Oh, but I can kind of believe it. So no, it, it, Reshiram's good. Don't sleep on Reshiram. I understand, yeah. But yeah, Ho-Oh, uh, it feels weird. Like I remember at the beginning of the season, a lot of people were hyping up Ho-Oh, like, oh, it's the next big thing. And then we discovered, oh, wait, we have Entei, and it's not restricted. So yeah. was Ho-Oh uh, a little bit more difficult or did you find it to be about as viable as it was at the beginning of the format? It, I found it as if it was a Ho-Oh, you know, it was every a format, <laughs> like going back, you go back to 2016, 2019, everybody's like, yo, this is a Ho-Oh's format, you know? And then it, at the end of the day, it's just a Ho-Oh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it feels like they do that every restricted format. <laughs> still finds a way to be bad. Yeah. I, think... I don't know why, but it was enough to get the win here so yeah i think the most hype ho -Oh format had to have been 2019 sun series when we saw whose team used sunny day ludicolo plus ho -Oh. i don't remember who it was but i know exactly what you're talking that is about. the most hype ho -Oh has ever been and as a reindeer player i hated it yeah <laughs> all right so we're hitting reshiram uh so assault vest reshiram i mean i love the coverage i'm assuming this team just has a great matchup versus calyrex Phenomenal versus Calyrex. Phenomenal into a lot of things, actually. Like, you have the Zern matchup covered basically with Nia Legal Whimsicott, especially yeah. because you have the Encore on Whimsicott as well. And it's neutral, uh, you just tank hits. No, honestly, it's phenomenal. My friends uh, Gabe and Nick built this with me, so. And honestly, it's just phenomenal. I got 78th on ladder with it a few streams back, so it was pretty fun to use. Yeah, this team looks cool. Honestly, like, I might, I might steal it. <laughs> <laughs> uh palkia okay so this is a hype palkia format we're starting honestly these these two are probably like the new hype pokemon right now um yeah. and i guess groudon is somewhat hype but i want to talk palkia right now palkia has just been picking up in usage like the past two three weeks uh because like palkia's stack is cracked but um yeah <laughs> your really thoughts is. on this Pardon? your thoughts on like uh your team and how this one performed uh this is Dingy's team, I'm going to be completely honest, this is not my team. Uh, a lot of these teams are stolen for the most part, yeah. at least for the early part. I mean, I would steal them anyway. too. But just Dingy's team, I figured, you know what? Dingy's a really good player, I trust Dingy's build, so here we are. Brutal swing. <laughs> I'm assuming that's, I, I, mean, I mean, I'm assuming Dingy made this, so it's like, yeah, no, if you lead off Calyrex, I'm taking it. Honestly, I'm I'm sure the spread probably lives the Calyrex and it just brutal swings and kills it back. Yeah. I, I don't know the details of it, but... I'm assuming that's what it's for. <laughs> yeah. All right, this definitely has Meteor Beam. Yep. Yeah, exactly. It definitely has Meteor Beam. I love that. There was a tweet the other day. It was like, there's nothing more frustrating in this format than missing a, a Meteor Beam with Lunala into Incineroar and then getting snarled back. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's All such right. a bad move, but yet such a good move at the same time. It is the focus blast of VGC. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, you know, right behind focus blast, blast itself. Yes. So, 
I mean, like, we already know Lunala has been picking up in usage recently. Like, it's it's picked well, up in usage just because of how good it is on Trick Room teams. Um, did you end up making this team, or is this another borrowed one? Uh, this is a borrowed team. I believe this is my friend's Nick, my friend Nick's team as well. So mm -hmm. shout out to Nick. <laughs> and it seems pretty standard, you know, just like Mystic Water or Raquinid. Um, ooh, actually, Max Special Attack. I haven't seen this. No, that that's that's Nick. I honestly don't know why he said that. He had some reason for it. He list he listed like a million different calcs, and I'm like, okay, cool, we'll run with it. <laughs> cool, I'll use it. But but that's just Nick's big brain. Like honestly, I don't know why, and it worked because. I was like, they're not going to expect special Arachnid in this game, and it, it yeah. just kind of ran over them. It was really good. All right. So, I mean, we got Iron Ball Groudon. Um, I actually, I ran into a Groudon team the other day without a Dusclops, and it still had Iron Ball Fling. I don't know why. I, I guess, it, well, this is Wolf's team. I'm going to be honest. This is Wolf's Invitational team. Yeah, so I know that much. I guess people just kind of make shift and make changes off Wolf's team, right? Because yeah. honestly, that's what happens, right? When top player does well, you take your team and you try to adjust it, right? Make it fit your play style a bit better. Yeah, but and I mean, it's a good team, too. Exactly. It's just Wolf's team and it's Groudon. You hit your P Blades, you're going to be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I miss gravity. Anyways. Right? All right. So, Evolta, obviously, we got no moves on this. You're trying to hide this one, but. Uh, this feels like a standard Eveltal team. I actually haven't seen Eveltal Lando Therian much. I've seen Lando Eveltal or L Lando uh, Incarnate Eveltal, but um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming you made this one, right? Uh, this one I did make, yeah, for the most part. So uh, what was the, the thought process of this? The thought process is basically Eveltal is one of those Pokemon that has really doesn't have a bad matchup. Outside of maybe you could say Zacian because they started running play roughs now. Well, so I mean, I'm to like, be okay. fair, it's got a bad Xerneas matchup, but every Eveltal comes with a stack attack included, so. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, like, you patch Xerneas with stack attack, and then between Scarf and Entei, I'll give you that, it is Scarf and Entei because every Entei is Scarf. Yeah. Um, and some are between, Entei, between the Entei and the Landorus, I mean, it really covers the Zacian pretty well because I'm able to just pivot in and out. So it, it's really, really nice for the pivoting wise, and then you just kind of Eveltal cleans up their, cleans up shop on everything else. I like it. I like it. I know Joe's a big Eveltal guy. In fact, he's yeah. the Eveltal guy apparently. So uh, he maybe, is the maybe, maybe share guy. them. <laughs> uh, so what do you have here? We got Life Orb Eternatus plus Whimsicott. I feel like Eternatus Whimsicott is such a good low combo, especially if you're running like non stall Eternatus. Um, is That's this fun. another one of yours? Uh, no, this is Nick and Gabe's. For sure, I'm gonna give credit where credit's due. Yeah. This is not mine. Um, but yeah, no, it's just similar, exactly what you think it is. Going with Eternatus, Whimsicott, and just kind of get some damage up immediately. I think that's the way I played it, anyways. Yeah, makes sense. I feel like Moltres Galar is probably one of the most slept-on Pokemon in the format. Like, it's always good. It is always good, but I feel like it doesn't see usage on enough teams. It's it's questionable, right? Because the thing is, you really want it, right? Like, you're right. It is always good. And the problem is, you throw it on, but then it's one of those things where it's like, it kind of just sits there if you don't get the matchups for it. Yeah. But when you get a matchup for it, it's good. It's just, if you can afford to have a slot that you don't need another Pokemon, it's really, really good. I almost feel like, um, you know how certain teams, or I guess you know how, like, teams with a really bad, um, teams with a really bad Xerneas matchup just patch it with Stack Attacka? Yeah, <laughs> I feel like an unexplored, an unexplored frontier and lazy team building is patching your uh, Calyrex matchup with uh, Assault Vest Moltres. I feel like that's an unexplored frontier. Yeah, yeah it's definitely underexplored for sure. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like that's something that would that would just be good at. Yeah. Um, uh, what are we at? We're at the standard the, little Xerneas team. Literally standard Xerneas. Except for Stealth Rock. Rock. Stealth Rock's just. <laughs> Outside of this standard Zern, like this is the team myself and Gabe built at the beginning of the format with a few changes just because Amoongus is better than Volcarona ever was yeah. at the, on this team anyways. But Stealth Rock is good, right? Because what you want to do versus Zern is you want to not lose your positioning, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm switching out, you're going to want to be switching out. So when you're in switching in and out, especially between when Shedinja was popular for a bit, uh, Incineroar is on almost every team, right? So you get the Stealth Rock, you do 25% on switching. It doesn't want to be switching in too much, right? And you also get that nice little bit of chip. So if you get your Xerneas boosted and then Incineroar switches in, sometimes it can be a roll with the Moonblast. You get the Stealth Rock chip, it's gone to the Moonblast. It, it's very, it really helps into Xerneas comes a lot. Yeah, this is probably one of the coolest Xerneas teams I've seen in a long time. And I feel like that, that like little... um. 
that idea you had with Stealth Rock, just stopping like them getting good positioning with Incineroar and stuff. I feel like, uh, like I straight up feel like that that sort of like mindset of I really don't want them pivoting in and on me is the same for like Calyrex Ice teams. So I kind of want to yeah. see where like Stealth Rock goes on that kind of build. I feel like it's hard to fit though. Like Calyrex Ice teams are so like optimized to the point where it's like okay you got the Aranguru you got the Calyrex Ice like there's very little room to like adjust things they all feel very samey but this feels like something that'd be interesting to try on that yeah for sure Gabe uh Gabe was the one that made, convinced me Stealth Rock was good so <laughs> yeah I mean like Lando <laughs> like Lando like the I, I last believe, move you like, ever think it's gonna run in this format Stealth Rock so at the very least you have that on your side too exactly it was, he's like Brian you gotta go Stealth Rock I'm like why can't i just u-turn out i'd rather you turn out he's like no you gotta go stealth rock i'm like okay yeah and i feel like like what are you really dropping for stealth rock you're dropping you're dropping u-turn which honestly like you could say you drop u-turn for rock tomb but like i feel like what you're dropping for stealth rock is essentially sludge bomb and sludge bomb doesn't really do too much for landers anyways it feels like it's just like um like a throwaway move that you just kind of have to run on rocky helmet variants so putting stealth rock on there is really cool What is left? So we got three left. We got the Zacian team. This is currently my favorite team in the format. I don't want to talk too much about it. Though, All right. I can answer a few questions, I guess. I guess I guess we don't have to answer too many questions. I mean, um, Haze or Parish Song? <laughs> uh, since I've used it on stream and anybody could really go find it, it's Parish Song. Okay. All right. I, I want to figure that out. I was like, you. it's only one of the two moves, and I don't know if it'd be Haze on the Zacian team uh that's all i really want to know and then this is just oh this is um yeah i'm blanking on his name santino yeah it's the santino's team yeah uh, we already exactly. know what this is just an exact santino face there's nothing yeah. nothing surprising there understandable and the last team the team that won you the whole run was this yours yes and no ah dang it okay <laughs> i was like dang it <laughs> <laughs> okay so the concept is not mine. The concept, I believe, the, the Cali Shadow Whimsicott obviously has been around forever. Yeah. Um. So, Jean Marc, I'm not sure. I believe. Don't quote me. I'm gonna butcher names here, and I apologize in advance. But basically, Yuki or goes by Reggie Kitty. She, I believe, was either winner or runner up in one of the women's uh, the Hattering series there. She was using a team uh, of the same six Pokemon. And John's like, Ryan, you've got to try this team. It's really good. So I'm like, I tried it. And basically, I just adapted it a little bit to more of, more so my play style. But full team building credits are not mine for sure. I mean, it's still your team then. <laughs> it's at the very yeah, least. I don't know about that. It's the same six Pokemon. And a lot of it's, honestly, a lot of things are not mine. Man, <laughs> to be honest. think about 2015. People were running the same six Pokemon. It was still their team because they like had different spreads and stuff. It's still your team. <laughs> yeah, I don't know though. Like, I don't know. I never like, I'm the type of guy that's always going to try and give credit. Yeah, like, of I, course. Of course. I never like to take credit for not my work, right? Yeah. Like, especially when it's, that makes sense. <laughs> shout outs where shout outs are due. But yeah, exactly. um, so, I mean, obviously you routed in this particular way, but during the route, which one would you say was the absolute easiest and which one was the absolute hardest to get a win with? Like on this particular run? Yeah, on the early part, hardest to get a win with, um, we'll go say up the holo, but I would probably say the hardest I had, probably Garatina. I Giratina? wiped on Garatina many times. I guess that makes sense. Giratina's... It, it's ugh. just such a bad one. I think I pulled it into Xerneas twice. I'm like, oh my okay. god. You pull it into Xerneas <laughs> okay, well, twice, you go, cool. okay, stack attack at time to carry. And it just doesn't always carry. That's the problem. Yeah. And then the easiest? Uh, Easiest for me is piloting Zacian, but I, I mean, that's the Zacian team. So, I mean, I'd say the easiest of the of the, the, the quote-unquote garbage restricted is probably Lugia. Probably. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever wiped on Lugia. I think it was pretty solid. Yeah. All right, cool. So, um, I don't know if you know this off the top of your head, but what was your, like, how long did it take you to actually complete the run? Uh, I would have to check the VOD. I believe I started the run at just, either just after 9 or closer to 9.30, and I think I finished it around 10.40, so just over an hour or so. Not wow. too bad, actually. That's, that's actually incredible. I honestly thought it would take people upwards of, like, two or three hours just to, like, play some of the games, like... Because it's, it's 22 games, 
of Pokemon. And if like a lot of the games are like real heavy on positioning, I feel like two hours is like the minimum I expected. The fact that you got it done in a round an hour. Been two hours. I don't know. I lost track of time. <laughs> yeah, still. But like the fact that you got it done within like the one to two hour point, like that's crazy. It's going to I think it's going to be hard for anyone to top your to top your record at this point. If anyone even like finishes this run, like you're the first person to finish this whole challenge. It's it's ridiculous. Every, the, like the entire run, I kept saying, "Oh, this is where I'm gonna lose," and I, somehow, miraculously, I just didn't lose. I don't like I don't even know what happened half the time. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, and I know you've been grinding the runs. I know a few other people have been grinding the runs. Dragon or Jordan, uh, Pokemon Trainer yeah. C or Pokemon Master CJ. Like, they're all grinding out Iron Man runs. Joe did a few. Um, I did a few. I, I know a lot of people have just been talking about it too. But dang, it took like I think I presented this challenge a little over three weeks ago almost a month yeah almost a month by now for sure yeah but it's crazy that it took that long for someone to finish but yeah congratulations um you. anything you want to say before uh, we wrap it up no not too much at all nothing at all but honestly thank you for creating this challenge it was tons of fun and thank you for having me on for this video I'm yeah man i appreciate it. it i appreciate you trying out the challenge and actually being the first one to finish it uh, i'm gonna try to get your name up somewhere, like host some kind of like Google doc for everyone who who's completed it. Uh, just as like a form of recognition. Uh, but yeah, thank but you so much you. for watching everyone. Thank you for coming on the video and uh, you know, be sure to check out Sable Live EGC. His link's gonna be in the description down below. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.